And this is why you should watch this video before you buy the new Omen 30L from HP. Stay with me guys, we're gonna find out what is the biggest flaw with this computer. Welcome back to the channel, this is Hardware Sense. As promised before, I told you I'm gonna show you something really, really new. And this is the highly anticipated and just released Omen 30L with Intel configuration inside. We have Intel 10th generation chips and we have the Z490 chipset on the motherboard. Um, now, when the 30L came out, or initially was first released with uh, some of the AMD chips, and I was not a huge fan of getting that configuration because I already have a editing rig that it's with uh, 3900X on it, so I really didn't need another AMD. I wanted to grab the Intel version since I knew that it's gonna be better for gaming, and this is exactly what this computer is going to be for. I will only be gaming on it, I will be modifying it, I will be adding things, I will be showing everything about it, so you can form an opinion, grab yourself one or skip it all together and get something new. Now, I want to rush out this video first and show you why am I thinking this computer is not a good buy, at least at the moment, at least at the state that is currently be sold. The biggest, the biggest, biggest flaw is this guys, memory. You're not able to install your own memory. Uh, as many other people, myself as well, I ordered this configuration directly from HP, coming with eight gigabytes of DDR4 only, with the thought that I will be later installing my own kit, like this one, which it's exactly the same one that HP are actually installing on their configuration. This is the HyperX Fury by Kingston, 3200 megahertz uh, DDR4 memory, uh, CL16, but, as I received the computer about a month later after I ordered it, the moment it came out, uh, quickly swapped the memory, found out there is no way for you to actually go to 3200 megahertz. The memory defaults on its 2400 megahertz. And I have two other kits that are faster. I tried another HyperX, which is 3600 megahertz. And I tried another ballistic uh, by Micron, which is also 3600 megahertz. And both of them defaulted on their default memory speeds, 2400 megahertz and 2666. Now, this is a big problem for everybody that is thinking about, okay, let me spend the little amount of money possible with the memory or something else. Uh, like myself, I grabbed 1660 Ti because new generation of graphics card are coming and buying something more expensive is really not reasonable at the moment. Just wait another month, see what Nvidia is gonna show us and grab that. Uh, so the little amount of money as possible. Uh, the only two things I changed and I configured more was adding a bigger power supply. This is the Cooler Master uh, 80 plus platinum 750 watt power supply. I want it to be more future proof and for the amount of money upgrading from 500 uh, watt that is the basic is definitely worth it in my mind. This is uh, even in years to come, you're still gonna be uh, able to add some more graphics cards or more powerful graphics cards and not even worry to replace the power supply. Uh, made by uh, Qual Master, so that's another good indication. Uh, it's a quality uh, power supply. Uh, yeah, obviously it's not the best in the world, but still much better. Anyway, uh, grab the only uh, other upgrade I made, I grabbed the wireless uh, by Intel. This is the a a wireless 6 AX201, the new chip uh, from Intel that it's wireless and Bluetooth combination for $10 upgrade over the uh, Realtek one. Yeah, absolutely, I'll grab that. Intel is much better. So these are the two only things that I upgraded. I left the default eight gigabytes of memory inside and uh, the biggest disappointment. Again, install all that stuff, try to do everything possible, guys. I install, reinstalled, use all kinds of software. You can't, you go to the BIOS, it's locked. There is no access to the XMP profiles whatsoever. And upon installing the CPU ID, you are actually greeted uh, with uh, the bad configuration that HP has done, and that is they are uh, uh, overclocking the memory by DDAC. So I don't know why they're not doing SMP, why they chose the slower and older GDAC, but you're getting 3200 megahertz only by GDAC and very slow timings. We are talking about 22, 22, 22, 
on a memory that is supposed to be 16, 18, 18. So I don't know why they decided to do this. Uh, upon further investigation, HP are using their own uh, Omen command center, which is very basic and is basically a one click uh, overclock, especially on the memory. The default speed is 2933 and overclock is 3200. Um, you know, when you install it, possibly go back and uh, look what's inside the folder, you will recognize that they're actually building up that up on the back of Intel Extreme uh, Tuning Utility. And the, for AMD configurations, they're adding the Ryzen Master. Uh, so there's is nothing, you know, special about it. Uh, that's why I just went ahead, installed the latest version of Intel Extreme Utility and wanted to see what's going to happen. So this is actually the only way you can get the SMP profile going to the uh, Intel Extreme uh, utility and activating it from there. Uh, now, once you activate it, you know, you play, you restart, it's still active, but if you keep it for longer, the computer is shut off. Uh, again, it will default back onto the 2400 hertz. So you're gonna have to go back to Extreme uh, Tuning Utility and activate your XMP profile. Now that's kind of a one way to go around things and kind of keep activating your own XMP profile, but it's definitely not ideal. The other thing is if you have RGB kit like this one or the one that, uh, you know, is by default from uh, HP, you're not going to be able to control that RGB uh, on that aftermarket kit uh, because again, HP has microcoded their memory, their specific memory to the BIOS. So anything else you install, it's not going to get recognized by the software. You're not going to be able to not only overclock, but change the RGB colors uh, or modes. So, you know, changing the RGB for me, it's a little bit of a less of a problem than the overclocking. Uh, and with the Intel Extreme Tuning Utility, I kind of can go around with the overclocking, but still that bothers me on a deeper level that HP engineers have chose to deprive us from the XMP profile. And I'm talking about, don't even, don't even give us an option for overclocking with uh, voltages or changing timings. Just do a slider somewhere uh, on the bias that it says XMP profile enable, disable. That's it, nothing else. You don't need to do any crazy things. Just do us this, uh, this favor and add it to a future biases so we can add our own memory. We don't have to be, you know, hunkered down and kind of pull back by you guys wanting us to, to buy memory from you buying memory from them you will think oh that's a great idea why not just go ahead and buy memory sure go ahead parts.hp.com offers that memory for and listen carefully 158 that's 158 dollars before tax and before shipping for eight gigabytes stick so if you're decided okay i'm gonna go go, go get 16 depending where you live you're looking at 320 dollars $320 for 16 gigabytes. Think about it. That's almost four times more than you can pay for this kid or any other comparable kit from Amazon or Newegg or anywhere else. This will be less than $100, you know, $85 to $90. And they're asking you for $320 to upgrade your memory from their own website. If this is not uh, hijacking or I don't know what to call it. You know, this is extortion. Basically, you're not going to be able to upgrade your own memory unless you buy it from us. Yeah, you don't see the problem. I do. And that's why I'm here to tell you this is a major, major, major issue. And that's why my advice to you will be the following. If you really like this computer, like myself, I actually love it. The redesign, you know, I have I will have tons of videos to talk to you about the redesign and other options in this computer. But for now, we're talking about the memory. I absolutely love it. This is the major flow. And listen to me, if you want to buy it, when you go to their website, get as much memory as possible uh, and, and, and configure it with that. Don't rely on, on the same uh, thought that I had and other people had. Uh, I'm going to get just the aid and upgrade it myself. This is what I would advise you, a safer option if you don't want to mess around with Intel Extreme Tuning Utility or any other softwares, just get the way it is from HP. Now, side note, uh, when that memory comes, again, it's going to be GDEC tuned. So you're going to look at 22, 22, 22. 
again very slow timings and maybe if you get um, your own aftermarket fast kit or some low latency 2666 kit let's say a CL15 or CL16, you're looking at faster memory transfer speeds uh, between those lower clocked uh, kits and the one that is coming from uh, HP. So that's another option. If you really don't care to spend more money on their website, just get a you know your your own kit, uh, something let's say 3600 uh, megahertz will default on 2666 uh, with faster timing. So if you're happy with that, go with it. Uh, you're not going to be able to control the RGB. Just, uh, just that's that's the only thing. It's going to be a problem. Uh, but for those of you that don't want to mess around, don't want to do anything, you just want a safer and better and faster computer uh, without having to even open it. Just grab 16 or 32 if you if you need more. But get the one from them because that's the only option. And it's a much much cheaper, although still very expensive, but much much cheaper if you're configured with that. So the difference is if you get. If you bump it to 16 gigabytes um, RGB, uh, same HyperX memory on their website while you configure, uh, you're looking at uh, about $120. So $30 more than what you're gonna spend on uh, aftermarket kit. So definitely advise you to do that. And uh, this is kind of what I'm doing. I'm actually returning this one to HP the way it is and I'm reordering another one with the proper memory so I can do all the other tasks and do some more things for you guys in the meanwhile. This is it. Um, if you want to read a little bit more about these issues and my detailed instructions, head over to HP Community uh, Forums. I have multiple threads. I'm trying to help people out, not only with this issue, but other issues as well. I'm raising this issue up to HP's management, hopefully engineering, so somebody somebody right out there at HP, hopefully they're gonna snap out of it and give us an option at the bias level to just enable and disable XMP and that's it. Let us use our own memory. That's why you're marketing this computer easily to open and you know stick your hands inside and change things because it's targeted towards enthusiasts and gamers, um, not just you know regular people or office people that don't care about the internals you know enthusiasts they will tinker around they will do stuff that they want to do to have that computer uh the way they want you know obviously uh as soon as i can get my other one i will replace that graphics card right away with my 2070 i will give you tests with that i will put the 2060 i will give you a test with that as soon as the new generation comes in in the month i will buy a new card from the 3000 series and test it with that. So there will be the tons of videos coming to you guys to show you what exactly you can expect from that configuration. But at the same time, please consider that memory issue. Uh, for me, that's kind of a major, uh, major flaw from HP and you know the engineering. But it's up to you at the end of the day, what do you want to do? Uh, my two advices is configure as much as possible as you want to, or get a faster, lower clock speed uh, memory, faster CL uh, memory, something with 15 or 16, put that on, go with it. Uh, you know, again, you're not gonna be able to change the RGB or if you get one without RGB, don't really matter, but still, you're gonna be good. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it for now, guys. Hit the thumbs up if you like the video. Stay tuned to the channel. There will be a lot more videos coming. I have a tons of hardware to show you. There uh, will be a lot of videos on this specific computer with a lot of tests. We're going to compare it to the HP <laughs> Pavilion Gaming Desktop. You've seen on multiple of my videos. We're going to play all kinds of games. Uh, give me a suggestion what games you want me to test and play. Um, the configuration I have at the end, I, I grabbed the 10 1600. K, which is, in my opinion and other reviewers' opinion, the best price performance chip you can get. Uh, this is, in my mind, the best processor. No really reason to spend more money for 10700 or 10900, unless you really need it for you know production or something. But for gaming, 10600 is good enough. Um, obviously, the memory you heard the situation. <laughs> it's big. I got the 1660 Ti, which I'm going to upgrade, obviously, and that's about it. Z490 motherboard. Great uh, new redesign by uh, HP. We have finally an intake fan. We have AIO on the top because we're going to be overclocking and uh, we're going to talk about that more later. That's it for now, guys. You have a wonderful day and I will see you on the next one.